In this frame, if he chooses the second answer, which is incorrect, he goes directly from page 1 to page 13. Page 13 attempts to explain the basis for his error, and then sends him back to page 1 to try again. He now chooses the correct answer and turns to page 7. On page 7, after some further reading, he is again asked a question, and again the page to which he next proceeds will depend on which answer he selects. When such materials are used in a machine, the student selects his answer by pressing a button, and the material he is to see next, depending on the answer he is given, is automatically presented to him on the screen. In addition to application in general education, programmed materials and teaching machines are also being utilized for military and vocational training. Here, in teaching basic technical knowledge to specialists in air defense centers, we employed a variety of response modes. The student writes some of his responses, selects others from a variety of alternatives, which are automatically scored, and performs still others on a simulated mock-up of the equipment that he is learning to use. Many other forms of devices are also being experimented with. Some of these, for very young children, present the material in audio-visual form, using recorded instruction to which the child listens as successive visual frames are presented. Here at UCLA, professors Evan Kiesler and John McNeil have been experimenting with machines like this one, teaching science to first grade children. The child listens as the program gives a short explanation and then answers a question by choosing the right answer button. Similar machines are being used for giving on-the-job instruction in industry and military training. The trainee is able to imitate each short step of a procedure as it is demonstrated on the screen, accompanied by recorded oral directions. Thus, he learns while he works, but can also do useful work while he is learning. Experimentation is also proceeding here at UCLA and elsewhere with very complex devices that employ electronic computers to provide highly flexible programs responsive to the needs of the individual student to a high degree. Such instruments are primarily useful at present as research tools, but their practical use will someday be feasible. For the present, however, the concepts of program learning will probably be implemented in general education, mostly by simple write-in machines and programmed materials in book form. Some of the implications of introducing such programmed materials into school systems will now be discussed by Professor Robert Glazer of the University of Pittsburgh.